Did you know that the giant blue whale we see today, weighing up to 180 tons and longer than three buses combined, has a past you would certainly not expect? About 50 million years ago, its ancestor did not swim in the deep ocean, but was a creature about three meters long, walking on four legs, living by rivers and swamps. It looked like a strange mix of a crocodile, an otter, and a terrestrial predator with a low gait and sharp teeth. Hard to believe, isn't it? Such a creature could become the ancestor of whales, the rulers of the ocean today. Yet it is entirely true. That animal is Ambulocetus, a crucial evolutionary link between terrestrial predators and the first whales, a vivid testament to the power of evolution. Let's turn back time to the early Eocene epoch, about 50 million years ago, to an ancient wetland in Pakistan. That's where Ambulocetus lived, a strange creature straddling the boundary of two worlds, land and ocean. It wasn't yet a fish, but it was no longer a purely terrestrial predator either. Imagine an animal that could wade through mud, stalk prey in the water, and then crawl onto shore to rest, a true walking whale. When the first skeleton of Ambulocetus was discovered in 1992, even without its tail and a few ribs, it still astonished paleontologists. Its skull had an inner ear structure very similar to modern whales, indicating good underwater hearing. But its dentition told a different story the story of a brutal predator. Its sharp incisors were used to hold struggling prey, while its molars were large, thick, and strong enough to crush bones. Its lower jaw could slide slightly forward, similar to a crocodile's mechanism, helping to generate maximum bite force. Notably, its jaw-lifting muscles attached directly to the ear bone an anatomical detail only seen in ancient whales, indicating it was in a transitional phase between the two groups. With that structure, Ambulocetus could generate a bite force of up to 1,400 newtons, enough to break a human femur or crush a turtle shell up to three centimeters thick. Its body was about three meters long, with a short neck, a flexible undulating back, and four legs still equipped with hooves, allowing it to move slowly but steadily on land. This structure also enabled it to plunge into the water, using its hind legs to propel itself strongly in an otter-like swim. When full, Ambulocetus would often crawl onto shore, basking in the sun to warm up and digest. A true predator of the transitional period, possessing both the instincts of a carnivorous mammal and beginning to take on the form of a future king of the ocean. The evolutionary journey of whales did not begin and end with Ambulocetus. It was an important link, but before and after it, there were other transitional stages, creating an astonishing chain of events. Even before Ambulocetus, we have Pachycetus. This animal lived mainly on land, looking very much like a jackal or a small wolf, but it already carried an important sign. Its ear structure had begun to adapt to hear better underwater. This was the beginning, a signal that some terrestrial mammals had begun to explore aquatic environments. And then came Ambulocetus, as we said, the walking whale. With the ability to move on land and swim efficiently underwater, it represented the stage where amphibious life became more pronounced, with paddle-like feet and a strong tail supporting swimming. After Ambulocetus, evolution continued with species like Protocetus. In Protocetus, we see a significant change 
the nostrils began to gradually shift to the top of the head, forming the characteristic blowhole of modern whales. Their hind limbs also began to shrink, and their tails became longer and stronger. Then came Darudon and Basilosaurus, true sea monsters with elongated snake-like bodies, hind legs almost completely atrophied, and tails that had developed into the characteristic horizontal fluke of today's whales. Each generation we see small but significant changes, a toe gradually disappearing, a tail lengthening, hind limbs shrinking. In just 10 million years, a short period in evolutionary history. The terrestrial wolf had completely transformed into a whale with a horizontal fluke, losing all retreat to shore, a spectacular transition from land to the deep sea step by step. However, science is not always a smooth path. Although the first skeleton of Ambulocetus found in 1992 caused a sensation, it was still incomplete. The absence of the tail and pelvis opened up some doubts and controversies, especially from some critical scholars, often those who do not believe in the theory of evolution. They argued that the specimen was not sufficient to definitively conclude Ambulocetus's role as a transitional whale, but science never stops searching and verifying. By 2001, scientists had another explosive discovery. A nearly complete skeleton of Ambulocetus was found, fully supplementing the missing parts, such as the tail and pelvis. This discovery strongly reinforced the initial conclusions of the research team, led by Theusen, quelling many doubts. Nevertheless, the controversies have not completely disappeared. Some dissenting opinions still insist that museum display models or illustrative paintings have added details such as fins or blowholes that the fossils do not clearly prove, leading to debates about the transparency in reconstructing ancient creatures. However, the scientific community has provided a convincing answer. Analyses of the soil layers where the fossils were found showed that the tail structure of Ambulocetus, although not hard bone, was preserved in the form of cartilage. This explains why the hard bone part of the tail was missing in the original specimen. Furthermore, detailed anatomical comparisons with other transitional species and modern whales have provided clear evidence. Despite dissenting voices, the majority of leading paleontologists still consider Ambulocetus an indispensable link, a vivid and convincing proof of the miraculous evolution of whales. So what made these terrestrial wolves dare to leave their dominant territory and venture into the deep waters? The answer, as always, lies in the environment. About 55 million years ago, Earth entered a period of intense warming, known as the Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum. The oceans became warm and teeming with life, from massive schools of fish to abundant, soft-bodied creatures. Underwater, food was more plentiful than ever. Meanwhile, on land, competition among predators became fiercer. Food sources dwindled, and the climate grew harsher. And so, a few daring individuals among those wolves, the first semi-aquatic creatures, began to seek out coastal waters. Initially, they only hunted in shallow waters then learn to swim, dive, and control their bodies in an entirely new environment. But every adaptation comes with a price. As time passed, the ocean changed again. The water became deeper, colder, and the evolved offspring of Ambulocetus, such as Protocetus, Basilosaurus, or Dorudon, had gone much further. They had powerful tail flukes, elongated bodies and lungs and inner ears perfectly adapted to deep water environments, while Ambulocetus still heavily relied on land, unable to dive deep 
or swim fast. As the food chain changed, Ambulocetus gradually lost its competitive advantage, was pushed back towards the shore, and then completely disappeared about 48 million years ago. But it did not disappear in vain, because the very failure of Ambulocetus paved the way for the success of its successors, creatures that learned to harness the sea, evolved to perfection, and ultimately became the giants of this planet, modern whales. So we have just finished exploring Ambulocetus, the walking whale, the creature that laid the first brick for the great evolutionary journey to the open sea. From its first tentative steps on land to mastering the ocean, if you want to continue exploring other strange prehistoric creatures, hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next journey.